As billions and billions of dollars are available for broadband funding, I get this question a lot. How does broadband funding work? As senior manager of our business development team here at Widelity, I talk to internet service providers all day long about the broadband funding process. Which broadband grants are available? How do I apply? How do I access these funds? So I thought I'd take a moment to walk you through that process and provide some support and education around how the broadband funding process works. So to begin, we're going to look at high level super high level from start to finish. First, you're going to target a funding program. Which grant program do you want to go after or pursue? Then you're going to want to plan and create a design and doc gather documentation, create documentation, research data, and then compile all of that into a grant application. Then, hopefully all goes well, you win and are awarded funds for your project. You receive those funds, you need to manage those funds, and complete the build that you promised to build in the application phase. So that's high level, total process start to finish. Now we're gonna dive into 11 components of that. There are a lot of details and steps involved in the broadband funding process. So we're gonna go through each one of these steps in detail and provide some resources along the way that will hopefully be helpful to you. So first, you're gonna choose where you want to build. You're going to identify a specific network build out, their locations, and what the potential needs of your project would be for that area. So some key information that you will need to research are area demographic information, community broadband needs, what the current level of service is in that community that you want to build or expand your network in, what the existing infrastructure in that area is and exists there, some potential environmental factors that you may face along the way if you're in a floodplain or in risk of natural disasters or environmental concerns. Those are some things you want to identify. Also, if there's any tribes in the area that you plan to service. So a co few common resources that we look at in trying to identify a program location or a project location are the Reconnect Service Area Maps. This resource is specific for the Reconnect program and it identifies where in the Reconnect program you would be eligible to complete a project. It's very specific to Reconnect, but also very helpful for you to see rural and non-rural areas, areas that have RDOF funding and that don't, uh, things like that. The second resource is the NTIA area's broadband need map. <clears throat> This map identifies uh, the speeds that are being utilized in the, the various areas that you want to service and complete a project. So you can look at a variety of different data sources like Ookla speed tests, FCC maps, things like that, in order to see what the if the area is considered served, unserved, or underserved. And you can identify the, the various speeds and the, the level of need that may be required for, for that area that you want to serve. And then finally, the Microsoft Data Tool is another very useful tool to be able to look at demographic data. It is rich with a lot of data that can be utilized for demographics and being able to identify the population, who is going to benefit and who needs internet service in the potential project that you're putting together. In addition, if you are lucky enough to be in a county or a state that has local resources available, you can utilize those resources as well as they may be more accurate than the federal level level maps. So utilizing any state resources to figure out which areas are unserved or underserved to, to build your project around. So now that you've done some research and you have a general idea of where you want to build, and areas that are unserved or underserved, you next are going to decide what broadband grant program match your build and which programs you want to apply to. So to do this, you are going to determine your project needs. What is the scope of the desired funding? How much are you looking to get a grant for or a loan? What is the matching requirement? How much match can you bring to the table? What are some potential partnerships that you could form that would increase the project's viability? Uh, are there any existing broadband resources that you can leverage from your company or leverage in the area in order to, to complete this project? You also will want to identify the right program. So you'll need to know which programs are currently available, 
what type of funding you want to go after, if it's a grant or a loan program. And then timing is also an important piece. When do you want to do this project? Does it line up with the application window for you to be able to submit an application? And do you want to determine your eligibility? If you are an eligible entity, if the service and the speeds that you can provide for your project would be eligible under the program rules, if your location is an eligible area, and if the demographic served is what the program is looking for. So looking at what your project can do and then I matching that up with the programs that are available is kind of what you want to do right here when you're selecting <clears throat> your funding program. And this is where I help clients all the time with deciding with a direction. Um, you know, this is a piece part of business development that I have conversations free of charge. Just let's talk about where you're going, where you want to go, what grant programs are available, and that might be a good fit for you. Uh, so this is a question that that I help people talk through kind of on a daily basis. So this isn't a step, but we wanted to take a moment to look at where is the broadband funding coming from now? So I am recording this in October of 2022. So please note, these may change, but as of October 22, this is the broadband funding stage. So we have broadband funding coming from the FCC. They regulate, they specialize in regulatory matters. And we also have funding coming from the USDA, the US Department of Agriculture. And as it is their name, they are gonna specialize in rural projects in rural America. And then we have the NTIA, and the NTIA is part of the Department of Commerce. So they're going to focus, have their focus be in the commerce side of things. And then finally, the Department of Treasury also has availability for broadband funding. And so they are going to specialize more in state and county financing. And so programs that are coming out via the state or via the county. So I know there are a lot of acronyms. We call it alphabet soup because there's so many different acronyms, so many different programs, a lot of people don't know where to start. So again, this is a conversation that I have with people all day long and I would be happy to have it with you if you would like. But here you can see a breakdown of the current programs, again, as of October, 2022. Um, the FCC, you can see at the top is the agency. Then we have the program abbreviation and then what that program acronym means. And then we have the description of that program and what those funds are for. So for example, the FCC is in charge of the Affordable Connectivity Program, which provides discounted broadband service for low-income households. FCC is also notoriously known for the RDOF program. They are administering the, the RDOF funds and the RDOF program. Then we move down the line into the NTIA. The NTIA is in charge of the BEAD, the Middle Mile, the Tribal Connectivity, and the Digital Equity programs. And so you can see the description of what those programs are here. Then we have the USDA via the RUS, which is administering the ReConnect program for broadband um, construction in rural areas. And then finally, the USDT, the Department of Treasury, is responsible for the Capital Projects Fund, or the CPF, and the SLFRF funds. These are both coming from ARPA. So ARPA is the American Rescue Plan. And this may be another term used for, for these types of programs. But again, these are broadband connectivity expansion type programs for building out broadband projects. So those were the programs. Now it, this is the eligibility piece. So if you are a broadband service provider, you can follow the tracks and follow the lines around to sort of see which programs you'd be eligible for. Because remember, one of the key pieces in identifying which program to go after is making sure you're eligible. We don't want to waste everyone's time if you're not eligible for a program. So first, let's figure out if you're eligible for a program and then kind of go from there. So you can see the various entities and then follow the tracks for which programs they would be eligible to apply for. And again, these are things that I talk to clients all day long about. So I'd be happy to set up a call and discuss the potential funding opportunities and the different programs that are available. So now the next piece, once you've identified, you've done your research, you know where you want to build, you have identified which program you wanna go after, now it's time to work with either internal or external engineers to design your project. You're gonna use network information that you have and general 
and general location as determined in step one. So, you know, that, that research that we did in the very beginning, using that research to then influence the, the design. Now, this is not a detailed engineering plan, but it is a high level basic design of what you're gonna build and where you're gonna build it. So some things to think about as you're going through this design process, what service are you going to provide via this project? Um, what speeds are you going to provide? And then as well as, are you gonna be looking for funding to fund a backhaul project or a middle mile project or a last mile project? Are you trying to fund construction or are you trying to fund digital equity um, and creating a digital equity education outreach type program? So what do you want the project to provide? Then what type of technology are you gonna use? A lot of the focus now is on fiber, but there is still a place for wireless. And if you're gonna use fiber or wireless or a combination of both, what sort of technology are you gonna use in this design? And then what is the scope? Are you going to be starting from scratch or are you going to be building off of already existing systems and already existing equipment? And how large is your intended service area going to be? So those are all factors you wanna take into the design process. So once you have that high level design, next is to create a basic project budget, listing out everything that will be needed in order to implement a project of, this, of the size that you have designed. So it's important to make sure you get all of your costs covered in this budget. So you're gonna to wanna to look at what materials are needed, what sort of technology and equipment are you going to need? What kind of construction are you going to have to do? Make sure all of those material costs are covered, as well as labor costs. What amount of labor are you going to need for building and construction, engineering costs, any permitting or fees or waivers or things that might need to be taken into account as you're going about the life of this project. In addition, it's important to remember any sort of administrative costs that you may run across. You may have some accounting or some legal advice that you may need counseling for. It's important to put that in your budget. If you have any pre-application expenses, like um, somebody helping you submit a grant or do any engineering design work or environmental reviews, um, and then once you win an award, you will have reporting and compliance and grant management type work that will need to be done as you manage millions of dollars that you are getting from the federal government. So it's important to make sure those administrative costs are taken into account when you're creating your budget. We encourage everyone to be thorough in these budgets. Most budget estimates cannot be revised and cannot be hired after the application is submitted. You can't ask for more. If you get five, $5 million, you're gonna get $5 million. Uh, another piece to consider is inflation. Inflation is causing a big problem with grants right now. People don't know how much, what percentage to ask for in building their budget because they know prices will go up. So this is just a tricky time and an interesting space to, to navigate, but it's important to get all of the costs in your budget so that you have everything accounted for and you won't have to pay for things out of pocket. Some programs do require price quotes from vendors as part of the application documentation. This is not all programs, but sometimes they do. So just a thought to be aware of as you're going through the process. And in addition, many, many federal programs now are requiring this Build America, Buy America requirement that uh, materials are to be sourced from the US. Sometimes that influences the price of the materials that you need to get for your project. So just be aware, you're gonna to want to be utilizing vendors that meet this Build America, Buy America requirement, and you wanna make sure those costs are taken into account in your budget. As a note, Widelity, as for our clients that we're helping with their applications, we do review your budget for compliance. We don't create your budget because that's your project design and all of the items that you need to come up with, but we will review it to make sure that it is covering all of your costs as much as possible and that it is matching the rules of the program. So next step is to create an outline. This is gonna define your high level plan in a couple of words, notes, bullet points. This is to kind of get you thinking through your project so that you can have an outline for your narrative once you start the application. So we recommend creating a bullet list of points 
you know, what is the project purpose? What are you trying to accomplish by creating this project? Is it connecting X number of homes? Is it providing service to unserved areas or unserved communities? Um, things like that. An estimated overall budget. Uh, where is your project going to be built? What kind of community members are going to benefit from your project? What's the economic development benefits going to be? And how are you going to build it? What is the technical aspect? What technology are you going to use? What service are you going to provide at what speeds? Things like that. Uh, and again, who will benefit? Well, what are the community members that are going to benefit most from this project? And if there's any environmental challenges that you may face along the way as you're building out your, your project. So now we have location, basic high level design, a budget, some notes on where you where you, you want to go with the project. Now you're ready to apply. Once the application window opens for the grant program that you are looking to apply for, you can expect to have to submit a variety of different items in this application. This list here is a general expectation of the different forms and documents that you'll have to provide. Every grant program is different, but this is sort of high level what to generally expect. So you will need an executive summary, high level overview of your project, summary kind of of the, the bullet points that we talked about. There will be a project narrative, a budget narrative, a detailed budget spreadsheet where you'll have to break down all of your costs, government forms. These could be simple signing of forms or it could also mean additional data and information templates that they may require. You will be required to have to submit a map, the level of detail and the file that map needs to be in varies program to program, but you will have to submit some sort of map detailing the project that you plan to do. Then you will need to compile data. Again, this is going to vary from program, but it might be data about yourself as the applicant or data for the project that you plan to build. And then every application will have some sort of digital submission portal and you'll have to upload all of this data and information into a portal system. Some are easier than others, um, but that is just part of the process. And Widelity has extensive experience with applications and assisting our clients in applying to a variety of programs. So if you need assistance, we are here. This is something you could do on your own, but this is also something that we provide service and assistance to clients who need the help. So we get this question a lot as well. People who are designing their budgets want to see a template. Let's look at some examples to, you know, be able to build our budget off of. So in the link in the comments below for this for the YouTube, there will be a link to this middle mile grant program. They put together a sample budget spreadsheet as well as a sample budget narrative. And so we thought these were great examples to be able to utilize for if you're creating a, a budget or a budget narrative. So once you have submitted your grant, it's in the portal, you press that magic submit button, there is a RFI period. Now that means request for information where the agency or the state is going to review your application and they're going to score your application. They may reach out to you with questions. They might ask for additional data. They might ask for additional information. They might ask you to modify or change your application. Um, and so this is just part of the process. It's how they review all the applications and then score them. This time period and the amount of RFIs you get can be reduced by having a very well planned out application with all the information that's requested by the by the agency. Sometimes these requests can be data intensive depending on what their request is and this period of this review process can take anywhere from three to eight months depending on the program and the agency and how thorough they are in their reviews and investigations. The programs typically do have a response requirement that you are respond, required to respond to the agency with your answer to their RFI, usually between two to seven business days. So it is important and imperative that you reply to them and respond to their question or their inquiry with the proper information within a certain time frame. 
Um, Widelity does also provide support and services here to help with the RFI process. We've processed over 6,000 RFIs for our clients. So we understand the lingo and the process and all of the information that the agency is requesting and we can assist Shell you need it. So after that three to eight month review period, RFI period, applications have been reviewed and then the agency of the state are going to announce who won the funding. This is when you can begin working on your project. And so another question I get a lot are, how are the funds distributed? Well, your entire award is not given to you at one time. You don't get $5 million and they don't say, good luck, see you later. So the reimbursement, there are three different ways that funding can be distributed. One of them is reimbursement. That is when you make the purchases required for the project and then you submit those invoices to be reimbursed for those costs. It's a direct to direct invoice amount and then a reimbursement amount. Other programs are percentage based where you may receive 20% of the funds up front and then the remaining percentages throughout the life of the program. And then the third option is also similar, but it's more milestone based where you'll receive a sum in the beginning and then you'll receive those remaining funds once you have reached various build milestones set out by the agency. It is important to not begin your project and start working on your project until your funding award has been announced. Anything you do prior to award announcement will not be covered by the grant. So once awards have been made and you've had your celebration, it is time to start purchasing materials. After, um, so some notes on purchasing materials. It's super important to maintain your records. Ensure that each invoice is filed and saved and organized and recorded appropriately. These invoices for any sort of grant program need to include invoice numbers, the date, the company, the type of equipment, where it was installed, any labor, time and materials that are involved. These invoices need to be very detailed in order for the government to, the government is going to review these invoices and make sure that they are covered under the program rules. So it's important to have very detailed and extensive records. Also, it is important to document any changes to the agency as the program and your build go underway. So if equipment was quoted in the project plan and it's now not available or there's a supply chain issue or something happened or you had a change in your plan, it is important to document any sort of substitutions and any changes that you may make in your project. It's also important to stay on budget. Remember, most grants will not provide you with any additional funding. So if your costs go over that project amount, you're going to be have to cover some of those costs out of your own pocket and not via the grant. So it's important to stay on budget and keep in your budget categories, all of the costs that you have occurring. Uh, again, I want to emphasize any costs or materials purchased prior to award announcement will not be eligible under a program you won't be able to be reimbursed for those costs. I know supply chain is a major concern, and so a lot of people are going out and buying and hoarding materials. Uh, do not do that. Do not purchase anything until you have a received that official award announcement um, because you will not be covered for anything you buy or purchase prior to award. So next you will have a set number of years to complete your project. This is going to be all agency and program specific for how long you have to implement your project. But it is important to follow the program rules in order to meet those milestones and report on those build out milestones that are required. Various times throughout the project, you'll have to report on the service that you're providing and who you're providing it to. So it's important to stay in compliance with those, those program milestones. And such as life, there will be unforeseen delays. There will be supply chain issues, inclement weather, natural disasters. There will be problems, there will be hurdles, and there will be delays. And the agency understands that, but you will have to record and report and document any of those delays to the project. And in addition, under those extenuating circumstances, some programs do allow for extensions. They can range from six months to a year or more if they're needed in order to complete the project. But again, another reason to be 
over communicative, record and document any situation or things that are happening in order to be in a good position to be able to be granted that extension. Now to note, some projects will not be allowed those extensions and instead they may be required to return funds to that agency if program deadlines are not met. So again, just another reason to stay on track, make sure you're meeting those milestones, reporting documentation and communicating with the agency so that you don't have to return any, any funds to the agency. So throughout the life of the grant program, you will need to file reports and compliance documentation to the agency or state. These reporting requirements are specific to each program, but generally you can think about, you know, you're going to need to document all purchases that you made with grant funds. You're using taxpayer dollars for your project, so you're going to have to be very detailed in the purchases that you make to make sure that they're allowable under the program rules. Uh, you will have to report on who you are providing service to, at what speeds you're providing that service, and there will be compliance with program rules that are specific for that program. Maybe there's Build America, Buy America rules or Davis-Bacon rules that you'll have to comply with and documenting those. You'll have to document any changes from your intended budget. If you have more or less funds in a budget category and you need to move funds around, that may be something you'll have to talk to the agency about and you also need to document all of your financial records. In addition, audits are a routine part of federal funding and any grant program that you endure. So it's important to just know that audits are just a part of the process and all companies must maintain complete financial records throughout the life of the program as well as after the program. We have seen audits happen after a program has completed, so it's important to keep all of your documentation neat and organized for an extended period of time. And then as a note, if you do not follow the program's reporting and compliance requirements, you may have to return some of those funds, all of the funds, or pay a fine to the agency. So reporting and compliance is super important to make sure you're staying on track with the program. And again, Widelity, this is our bread and butter, and we can assist with filing these invoices, managing and completing your reports, and making sure that you stay in compliance with the rules of the funding program that you're participating in. So to recap, this is the broadband funding process. You're gonna choose your project, where your service area is going to be, what service you're gonna provide, and who's gonna benefit from it. Then you're going to document and plan. What's the project plan? What's your design? How much is it gonna cost? Your budget? Where are you gonna apply for funds? What funding program are you going to utilize? Then you're gonna submit your application, answer any RFIs from the agency promptly, execute your and build your project plan. And then along the way, you're going to complete all reporting and compliance that are required during and after the project. And Widelity is here to help throughout this entire process. Shall you need any sort of funding support assistance? So at Widelity, we are committed to providing the highest level of service, ethics, and commitment to our clients. And if you would like to learn more about Widelity or the services we provide, or would like to talk about the broadband funding opportunities, please visit our website at widelity.com funding. I would love to meet you as part of our business development team. Um, you can also read up on the program requirements. On our website, we have a program information packet for various programs that you can read a high level overview of the program to help you learn more. You can also use our friendly Google and Google those, those program requirements and discover funding opportunities at your state level. Um, so please feel free to reach out. My name is Brooke Coleman. Um, my email address will be linked below as well. It's brooke.coleman at widelity.com. I would be happy to talk with you about the broadband funding process or a specific broadband funding program that you may need assistance with.